Well, I know, sure as shit, I don't watch the fucking Super Bowl. But I stay in tune for two things. Movie trailers and uh, the mm-hmm. fucking funny-ass commercials that companies just pour millions of dollars into just to get a recognizable millions. face. Millions! Oh, like, yeah. I think this year, I think my favorite one has to be Agent State Farm with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, because why not? <laughs> it fucking works. I, I was hoping he would, like, Arnold would musically do, like, the, you know, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. He didn't, but he's just like, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. <laughs> just, it's just, it's so fucking good. I feel like if he tried to do the musical side of it, it would be like when his helmet broke. In Total Recall, is just... <laughs> get to the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Oh man, yeah. But no, like I, I think I even spoke about it in uh, your Discord, there, Captain. That like the only mm. sports I ever tuned into was the two big ones in my eyes: Space Jam and basketball. That. Sure, oh, yeah. that's Space it. Ball. That's the only time a I true, tune in. A true American classic. Mm-hmm. It really is. I For it really is. I have I have big thoughts on this film. <laughs> if you call me thirteen, or, if you call me bitch thirteen or fourteen more times, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Queek, little bitch, Scalari. Like seriously, I re- like I really want that to be a thing. I want basketball to be a thing because I would show up to those matches easily yeah. it seems like it would be a fun game it would like it'd be how to something speak, different hmm? how to speak san franciscan vagina <laughs> <laughs> i would say that they would have trouble making that today but south park is still on the air so and i know matt and trey didn't actually write that well they're not credited as writers on that movie yeah um, they absolutely did a pass of it that they just weren't credited for. Oh, uh, the humor is very. It's South way Park. too. Yeah, yeah, it's way too Matt and Trey coded, uh, especially with uh, 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 Dian uh, Dian Backer, who uh, also played Chota Boy in Orgasmo, uh, being in it with them, and he was also in <laughs> Cannibal the Musical. <laughs> Is, is, is that is that squeak or whatever that, is? That, that, yes, oh. yeah, squeak. Yeah. yeah, I know he was. I know he's in, in at least one episode of South Park, and that's when uh, the devil gets a new boyfriend and breaks up with Saddam Hussein. Oh no, <laughs> shit! That's him. <laughs> that's him. Oh, fuck! I think like when he decides to like join the team and like move into the same house as Matt and Trey, and he's like, "Oh, you know, here's your bed." He's like. He's like, oh, this is mine? No, that's the dog's. This is yours. It's like a it's like a cardboard box with like a blanket in it. It's like, this is so fucking weak. I'm not get, going to get laid in there. Dude, you're not going to get any action. You're a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. If you guys call me bitch 13 or 14 more times, I'm out of here. <laughs> well, at least I'm on the team. Oh, man. Like, to... Yeah, I would just love to see how, like, whether... Canada, America will like do the psych outs. Like that's all yeah, right. Look forward to. <laughs> like uh, I think uh, uh, good. With Trey using the Cartman voice too. Yeah. Damn, see if they can fat. <laughs> hey, tell him he's fat. Oh man, that's not cool. No, no, no. Make it subtle. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was <laughs> subtle by all fucking means. <laughs> Even just the impact on the ground and like Trey like fucking launches a good few feet with feet flailing in the air too. Feet flailing in the air is a accurate depiction of what we're doing here. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the BPGN podcast. <laughs> I am one of your hosts. I am Captain Chronoton. <laughs> uh, alongside of me, I have our fearless leader. Bigger Gamer, good to see y'all folks. 
And we also have with us, of course, our bearded friend. Up and down. <laughs> I uh, was like, you didn't say it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Uh, so, speaking on, on the topic of films today, and even getting back to like what we were, I just mentioned earlier about the Super Bowl. We got some yeah. fucking movies to look forward to this summer. Like, like yeah, we do. Deadpool and Wolverine. That yeah. looks that's mental. obviously like yeah. Uh the most viewed movie trailer on YouTube ever. The, the, in the first see, 24 in the first 24 hours. Do you see how many views it has? Let's see. It's uh, got to be up there. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's what the the note that I saw earlier was I mean, it was nuts. Three hundred plus million. That's a uh, lot of people. I just see here on the Marvel Entertainment YouTube page seventeen million views in just two days. But that's yeah, like it, it's one of the most anticipated films. Yeah, oh one, yeah, one point nine million on IGN. But yeah, like I I had to yeah, watch. They're that. probably combining across multiple channels but still yeah it overtook um oh what was it i don't remember now it was another big viral thing like that but yeah no obviously deadpool 3 that movie's gonna make a billion dollars and oh. then we're gonna see a thousand news articles goes is the age of superheroes coming again oh yeah like i think i saw yeah, one person not. say uh in the comments like on one of the youtube videos like oh mcu is back finally i'm like the fuck <laughs> It's just like I get it. Like there wasn't that many good hits for Phase Four, and that there were some stinkers. I, I will be honest, but I guess it's just whatever is your poison. Like what's your what's your go to? You know. But looking, and at I really I dug the fuck out of the Marvels. Marvels was good. Like not really a fan. Of I liked it, but it was good. It was fun. She though. was so much better in this one than she was the first one though. That I will agree with you. First one. I couldn't, I, you can never make me watch that again, but the second she one, she was just so it. stoic. Yeah. But this one. Yeah. She's more playful. She has more banter. She's smiling. She's giggling, laughing. She's a real person this time around. Yeah. Um, uh, which, uh, but Amon Vellani as, uh, Kamala Khan, Oh my god! Oh, I, he's so good. I love that character so much. It just—it's so witty. Like just to hear, she, she is the beating heart of that movie. Like yeah. that movie does not work without her in it. She's like she's like the the big fan of all like Marvel in there because like mm -hmm. even just that uh, that little clip of just her on the ship with uh, Captain Marvel, Photon in there and just her to go high squeakly oh we're a team we are not a team oh we're a team and she just like just lit yeah. the fuck up yeah like there was a lot of fun moments in that film yeah like, i really liked it it felt it had that like first guardians of the galaxy feel i agree yes especially the cat scene holy shit <laughs> Oh my god, with the Flurkins just eating people. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Marvel just holds up a cat. Sorry. Ugh, just like grabs a bunch of them. Just like, holy Fantastic. Shit. It's Fantastic. just like, if Marvel were to make an Aliens film, this isn't a bad first step. <laughs> like, shit. Yeah. Oh. Hey, we're going R-rated with Deadpool versus Wolverine. The first MCU Whoa. movie. To go R-rated. <laughs> now, we've had the TV show. Echo was rated M for Mature. Which is actually a good um, series. I didn't mind that. I'm almost Yeah, no, it. I really enjoyed good. it. Really good. Uh, but show. now, because of Echo, all of the Netflix Defenders verse is canon. Nice. Wow. Now, Even Iron Fist? Because I heard that one didn't do yes. good. Nope. They, all of it's canon now. Cool. Cause yeah, like those Netflix series. Well, minus Iron Fist was Iron Fist was really good. Like, Iron Fist season two was actually really good. Oh, I didn't know they uh, even had a season two. What the hell? I'm pretty. Did I imagine that? I'm pretty sure that exists. Yeah, like I first I've heard, but yeah, if they do, 
I, I hope the second season did good. Um, yeah, like I hope that it, start... focused, it focused more on Colleen. I'm I'm pretty positive on this, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah, like since they brought back, uh, fuck, what the hell is his name? The guy who plays Daredevil in the Netflix series, Charlie, Charlie Cox. Cox. Thank you. Um, since they brought him back, I hope that they're bringing back yeah. like Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, John Bernthal. Like, bring him in, John they're Bernthal. Good. John Bernthal is confirmed. He is coming Ooh. back as Punisher in Daredevil: Born Again. That's confirmed. Oh baby, I'm I'm happy to hear that. He was a good Punisher. I hope um, that the um, also Foggy and Karen are both back. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. yes. Uh, D'Onofrio's back as Kingpin. Oh. Uh, Bullseye is back. Which one was Bullseye? He's the assassin. He can't miss. He was the villain of the third season of Daredevil. I don't think I got that. Who stole Daredevil suit? Okay, mm, that, that, that's hitting the memory on that one. Fuck. But like, yeah, going, no, it's gonna be fucking awesome. <laughs> like, did you see? Like, did did you happen to like figure out some of the Easter eggs like in the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer? So I I, I, re- I sent you guys <laughs> in our uh, Discord chat that we have uh, the Secret Wars comic book that you yes. posted yes uh that's in in the dirt there in the void uh there's a broken bottle next to it which is the same gamma blood irradiated soda pop that killed stan lee in the incredible hulk oh shit. with edward norton stan as lee. the hulk i've been hearing like i've seen photos of this online and if i could find them i'll throw them up on here as well um there was actual footage of the 2005 Fantastic Four cast back in their like costumes on set shooting. Let's do it. I'm like, cause like you see the like in one shot, you see the the Fox Studio logo like broken into the ground. I'm wondering, yeah, is this like and, a Deadpool? Yeah, Deadpool kills? gets slammed into it. Like Deadpool yeah. kills the Fox Marvel universe. That's I think wondering. it is. That'd be cool. I wouldn't be opposed. Um, like even just the opening of him like having a birthday or whatnot, and you see like everyone sitting around yeah. like, you fuckers all died at the end of the second one. Uh-huh. But I'm like, wait, you fucked with Which time. means he's been Yep, he's been abusing his time travel device that he got from cable. Yeah, hence the TVA. Yep. Um yeah, it's just But I, was... I also think it could be that the reason the TVA is so interested in Wade is that he can't die, but I also think he's singular. Mm, although there's no other variants. And that, that's what I'm currently thinking. That's why the TVA has to hire him. That's not bad theory on that shit. Because there's only one Wade Wilson. That's my theory. I have nothing to back this. This no. is just my bat shit. But that's a good one. Uh, but that's my theory: is that he does not have a duplicate. Hmm. I I am on board for this because this sounds good. Because like, yeah, why else would the TVA fucking hire him? Hmm? But then, when you look more later in the trailer, fucking Pyro is back. Fucking Pyro is back. I man. see that's that. nuts. And my wife's like, that doesn't look like him. I'm like, well, it's been twenty years. I'm like, he's aged. right. Yeah. It's- <laughs> but like dude's almost 50 (laughs) and then you see on facebook a post of like him in costume and saying like i'm back i'm like oh shit i'm like does that mean we're getting bobby back as well as iceman like that'd be sick Uh, fucking maybe oh like if sean's too busy aaron might do it fuck like to you get to see the costume a bit at the end but yeah, just see yeah, Deadpool. Yeah. Just, like, just a second. Yeah, just see Deadpool. Be like, I've been looking everywhere for you. Shank, just like in the shadow. I'm like, oh fuck yes. Oh, I'm so excited for that film. There's, I've yeah, I've watched so many Easter eggs. Apparently, that Secret Wars comic that's on the ground next to him. It, I looked it up, and it's the cover of Secret Wars Two with Doctor Doom on mm. it. So, fuck yeah, Battle World, it. baby like makes sense oh fucking bring it i'm ready july come on 
But then even speaking July, we didn't ask for it, but I'm here for it. Twisters. A sequel to I, Twister. You know, yeah. That looks okay. Is that I'm not from like the, the, 90s? the 90s or whatever? Yeah, with like Bill Paxton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Why are they making a sequel now? So the only theory I have is because I know in the filming of the first one, Bill Paxton and what was it, Helen Hunt? Yes. They did not get along on set. Like they hated each other. So I don't know if this is like because of that filming or because like Bill Paxton passed like in like what, 2018, 2019 around there? Um, something like that. Yeah, because he was he had been filming Agents of Shield. Okay. And so I could be a totally wrong, but this looks like a whole new cast. They could probably be like descent, like, you know, like children of the previous, you know, Twisters gang. Yeah, it's definitely connected because in the trailer, they're using the Dorothy devices that oh. they used in the first movie. I couldn't help but so smile. There's, when I there's definitely Dorothy. connective tissue there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what it ends up being, I don't know. But, yeah, they're they're definitely tying it into the first one. Yeah. No, just to see that and just smile and think like, wow, we're getting a Twisters film in 2024. And... I, I always try to look for films to break up like the MCU stuff that comes out. This mm -hmm. couldn't be any like a better palate cleanser than this. I'm just, I'm so happy. Oh my God. Just hopefully they don't forget the cows flying in the air. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't forget the cows. We've got cows. <laughs> and I, I think I've only seen Twister one time, but yeah. one of my friends fucking loves that movie and like don't you live in the midwest yeah oh, dude it was for science class we uh, that's the only reason why i watched it one of the actually the finale shot was shot in the province i'm from from twisters mm. everywhere else was done in the states for like i think yeah in the midwest in the states but there was it was the finale shot where they're like running like past the big red barn and like tying down with like the the belt on like yeah, the yeah, fight. yeah. That was all done in like the process. Sure, of that's going to work on an F5. Yeah, yeah I call ahead. bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the leather belt is going to stop an F5. Yeah. No. <laughs> sure. sure. You, you can tell they're Midwestern because they, how reckless they're being with everything. Well, like, even for the fact that, like, they they got more modern with the tornado chasers. Because, like, now in the trailer, you see, like, some of the trucks having, like, the drills like attached to like the chassis of the truck that go like a right. like, few feet in the ground. I'm like that shit's real. You know, like you see that on videos, but yeah. If you guys had the chance, would you like go tornado chasing? If given the chance, no, I <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. no, me neither. Yeah. No, I, I wouldn't. No, thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I would, I would definitely. I, I, if, I've been uh, close enough to several. I'm, I'm great. I'm don't be Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in Illinois, when we hear the tornado siren, in other states that usually means go down in your basement, but in Illinois that just means where's it at? Let's go take a little gander. <laughs> like for here, we don't like if we get tornadoes, they don't ever come to like the city where I am. They always go in like middle of fucking nowhere in the province. But okay, so the city that I live in, we call it the bubble. Okay. Because we avoid bad weather for the most part. It always breaks right around us. Yeah. Uh, until we got hit with... They classified it as an F3, but the damage it did, I still say F4, um, oh. literally cut a line down the middle of my entire city. Fuck. It's just a, just a straight thoroughfare and <laughs> just devastated that, devastated that, uh, absolutely destruction on a level i've never seen before and that was five years ago almost now and we still have places that aren't fully rebuilt so yeah twister shit i love it and i'm so excited for it yeah but when i say like oh the leather belt didn't stop it uh that's what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah no kidding uh my city got cut in half, and well, 
leather belt and a lead pipe that's deep in the ground. Yeah. Uh, if uh, yeah, if my friend had just put a leather belt onto their foundation, <laughs> perhaps their house would not have flown away. Very believable. There's like that one guy right now, like just going to like the nearest leather boutique and just buying out all the leather belts for his house next time. Yeah, <laughs> using those, like I secured straps. I secured my house with leather belts because I saw it and twisted. <laughs> and pre- by God, let me tell you, it worked. Praise the Bill it Paxton. Worked. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, yes. Man. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. 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 Bill Paxton. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, just even just to, like again to hear Twisters getting a sequel like in 2024. What's something from the nineties? You guys like from what we grew up, the eras we grew up with. What's a film you think you would like to see either a sequel or a reboot that you would be okay with. Ooh. It had to be from the nineties. At least what we grew up on, like our generation. So for like, oh. you know, all three of us from like the nineties going, well, eighties for captain, but he, he was, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just, I just remember I was like, you like, there's a bit of a gap between all three of us, but really between like, 80s 90s 2000 I'll, let's yeah. say eight let's say 85 through 2005 that's fair um, i have to look at this movie to make sure it falls within that time frame <laughs> <laughs> i think there's maybe a few i could think of um you know what it's a mm, i would like to see cool world be re- oh. remade it, it's a very that's like, an interesting pick i like i seen that before i seen who frame roger rabbit oh shit so, okay so you had a you had a horny view going in well uh, man no, mind when you watch you for roger roger it <laughs> that came out that movie came out the year i was born in 92 i didn't see that mm. film till 99 so very young, I seen that uh, along okay. with with heavy metal, yeah. both two horny films. I mean, honestly, that's I mean, I was seven when that movie came out. I mm. saw it then, so that I mean, we're we're right around there. But like, it was, it's a good like concept, fucked up in a way, but good. No, it it's a terrible. It's a terrible film, it, but it was an interesting idea yes. that I'm glad they tried. Oh, yeah, because, like, if you think about it, it's like, oh, you know, like, oh, don't fuck a cartoon. And if you hear one person say, oh, who the hell would fuck a cartoon? Have you ever seen Jessica Rabbit? Yo. <laughs> My hand is not raised. You guys are a bunch of heathens. Bullshit. If you want to go. You are a fucking liar, gnome. A lot of people's first crush is like at a young age, either was the nurse cart- from Animaniacs. Are you oh. fucking kidding me? The nurse from <laughs> Animaniacs, and you're like, no. Nah. For the record, absolutely not. Off the record, absolutely. It, we're it's all on the record, so no. thank you. Please, oh. don't. yep. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it's on. It's it's up. No. We're recording right now. No. It's done. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'll even throw no, you this one. No, they're no, no one wants to fuck the nurse. It's fine. Everyone wants to fuck the nurse. It's fine. It's totally okay. <laughs> but, but she's not an animal. I think she was a person, wasn't she? Like human, just animated. No, wasn't animated. there a bunny nurse? Wasn't there? Yeah, what? It was like a bunny nurse. Yeah, I think so. I don't think so. Or something like that. A bunny or a cat? I don't know. I don't know. I was. I was into it though. Oh, but then I hate real life furries. So fuck. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's that's, that's, it's questionable when you sit back and go like. I, <laughs> I think it's just I like freckles, and most people who do cosplay like that have freckles. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't know. And then like, fuck. Even just mentioning like, uh, cool world. Not gonna lie, Hollywood. Whew. Yeah, yeah, oh, right, for yeah. sure. <laughs> I, I'm not going to deny it. Whew. I would be the cause of that. Also, mess. that's a that's a James Bond fucking name. It is. <laughs> this is Hollywood. <laughs> God damn it! Yeah. Oh, that's some stupid James Bond shit. But you know, I 
I haven't seen that shit in decades. You, um, I think the last time I seen it probably would have been during COVID, and I last seen it on Prime. And yeah, okay. like, I agree, not that great of a film. Um, yeah. but, but the concept I thought was incredible, though. Like again, yeah. great they did it. But if they so were to do it now, I hope so. Yeah, I would say you're advocating for kind of revisiting this, especially I, I do think that's interesting because now we're more aware of the fourth wall. Right? Oh, so yeah. I, I think the idea of like humans and cartoons play together. I mean, that uh, Chip and Dale movie uh, Rescue that, Rangers, did, yes. that that was essentially a sequel to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> like Pretty much. Yeah. If you think about it, like it, it does the same kind of thing. So build off that same vibe. Yeah. Like, is there anything that I would want really change from cool world? Like there would be a lot of changes, obviously like to make it 2024, but right. don't lose, don't lose sight of the concept though. You know, like maybe it's like Hollywood is trying to make another like comeback. You know, like, I don't know. It could be something along those lines. But I would like to see a reboot of Cool World. Like, yeah, no, I think that's a cool idea. Yeah. How about you guys, Captain? Um, Really, the first thing that comes to mind is kind of from that same era. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, the movie? Yeah. Oh, yes. That's a good one, too. Shit. I would like to see that. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So... There was the film before there was the TV show. Right. And then the Angel spinoff and then the endless amounts of comic books <laughs> that have come out since then. Um, but yeah, it all started as a TV show or excuse me, as, as a film uh, directed by Fran and Kaz Kazai, mm -hmm. who then got an executive producer credit on every single episode of the TV show, even though they had nothing to do with it. Holy shit. Fantastic. That dude did. How how to make money 101, right? Like that's holy shit. How much money they made from having their episode like their name on every episode. Crazy. Fuck. Royalties right there. The fuck. But oh. the film was really good. Mm -hmm. But it's I mean, well, I say really good. I I think it's great. Oh, I do. And it establishes the concepts. Mm. Where then the show focalizes, you know. And, yeah. Okay, this is how everything makes sense. So I think doing a film of Buffy again, restarting the franchise with modern day, like, let's go women energy in a lot of projects. It I can think it work. Kick ass. You know, yeah. like that was like, if you think, I don't want to say pioneered because that's a very, that's a term that gets thrown around a lot easily. But if you're talking about like female empowerment, like, yeah, Buffy would be on my list easily for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Paul Rubin was in that too. He was one of the vampires. In yes, that. he was. Yes, he uh, was. And he reprised his role as that vampire in the What We Do in the Shadows television show. Oh shit. Oh, I gotta find this episode. Fuck. Um I'm trying to think. Wasn't wasn't one of the kids from 90210 in the film as well? Um oh, I'm trying to remember who all was in that. He's a very well known one. His kid's a wrestler. Um Oh, it was uh Luke Perry. That, yeah. There we go. Yeah, he was yeah, he in played that. uh he played uh Pike. Yeah, he was kind of like the, I don't want to say the love interest to Buffy. Eh, but yeah, kind of. kind of. Yeah, somewhere around there. But yeah, great film. Awesome fucking soundtrack, by the way. Oh, oh yeah. Like, what was it? Rob well, Halford with, was doing uh, his own thing. Rutger Hauer as the vampire was so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was like the head I'm one. Good, I'm yeah, and I'm I'm playing on who her watcher was, but it was somebody cool. Oh, that was um uh Joe Sutherland. Oh, Kiefer Sutherland? No, his dad. Oh Donald Sutherland. There we go. There Fuck. we go. Okay. 
Shit. I had to wait for my brain. <laughs> the sign, the synapses had to go click, 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 click. <laughs> just, just roll a dex back there. Just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I was like, that's literally how I do my brain is like an IMDb search. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, for me, it's just whatever film scenes go off for me. It's just like, oh, yeah, you're connected to this, this, this. Okay, I know who you are now. Um, no, great pick. I, I remember, like, the soundtrack, is it was just metal in that yeah. soundtrack. I know, like, Rob Halford was going on his own, the lead singer, Jews Priest. And then you had my favorite Ozzy Osbourne song, Party, Party with the Animals. And that's the song playing mm-hmm. in the background mm-hmm. while she's, like, fighting the vampires during prom which just oh chef's kiss on that one gnome do you have a film that you would like to see brought brought back like a reboot remake from like our era yes escape from la the the series that brought us the metal gear solid games wait series or film yeah. Oh, uh, the movie. The movie. They gave okay. us Metal Gear. Uh, they gave us the Metal Gear series. Okay. Oh. There was also like Escape from New York, but that came out like twelve years before or whatever. There was like, a huge gap Correct. between the two movies. Okay, it's been a bit since I've seen those. Uh, Kurt Russell was the star of that, eh? Hey? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Snake. Yeah. Snake Plissken. Yep. And yeah. literally, Hideo Kojima was like, "That guy's cool. I'm gonna make a copy paste version of him." And make my own series based around that guy. I never knew that. Like, yeah. it, it makes sense Liter- now that you say it, but his name is literally Snake Bliskin, and it's like the same, basically the same thing, aside from like a super convoluted story. Hmm, okay. With uh, Metal Gear Solid series, yeah. yeah. I, I I remember watching within the past ten years, uh, Escape from L.A. again. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it, this movie did not age well at all. But, like, sp- uh, special effects speaking. But the the, the uh, plot idea and all that is very cool. And I would like to see an, either another escape from Insert City here or just a complete remake of them. I can, see, be them, careful. I can see them do that with, like, Kurt Russell's son. If he'd be willing to do it, I could see it. Oh, uh, Wyatt Russell. Yeah. Uh, U.S. agent. Fuck. Yep, he does play U.S. agent. Uh, he also is in the uh, Monarch uh, History of Monsters or whatever it's called show on Apple TV. Uh, that's really fucking good, and is set in the Monster Verse, which has a new film coming, Godzilla Kong. Uh, their new one. Ooh, fuck. Is uh, Godzilla vi- minus one any good? I've been curious about that film. Yeah, I haven't I, seen it. I've seen it. It was really good. Yeah? It's completely in Japanese. Well, that doesn't bother me. It's just slap yeah. on subtitles. Yeah. It, it, it was very good. And, like, I, I'm excited for the next installment of the series. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was, you know, like, it just shows, like, the things that led up to, God, like, what caused Godzilla, which would be, like, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki or the right. bomb testing in Bikini Atoll. Yeah. But nope, it all takes place right after World War II. Wow. Holy mm. oh, shit. It's a great fucking great movie. Big fan of it. I would I'm excited for the next one. Fucking hey. Um how I mentioned and, oh go ahead, sorry. I, I'm sorry, I, I should probably should, I just popped in my head too. No, they didn't they made that movie on like a shoestring budget compared to yeah. other like special effect like other movies with like that much special effects and it did w- and it did so well and it doesn't look like a cheaply made movie either. You're talking about the the uh, the newest one? That got Godzilla minus 1? Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Wow, unreal. Um so mentioning with like Buffy earlier about, you know, a, a good soundtrack and Sure, it might make us sound old. I don't care at this point. But I will say that licensed film soundtracks like were better in like the 2000s mm-hmm. and that. Like, unless your name's James Gunn, like making those banger right. soundtracks from like different eras of music. I love it. Can you guys throw me like, you know, maybe a few 
movie soundtracks that you think are top tier in your eyes? Captain? I, I, I think about what uh, <laughs> Adam Scott's character in Parks and Rec, uh, Ben said, where he talked about like April opens up the CD case and it's all soundtracks. It's like, it's like a director made a mix CD just for you. <laughs> nice. Oh, it is. Um, you think about that it. said, Batman Forever. That had a killer soundtrack. That's not the one with, uh, or is or is it the one with Mister Freeze and Poison Ivy? No, oh, that's Batman, that's and Batman and Robin. Drink Jimmy Cook. Oh, okay, no way. Sorry. Yeah, forever is uh, Two Face and Riddler. Oh, okay, I got you now. Oof. Uh, but movie. that's like sealed, kissed by a rose. Um, there's, I, I feel like there's like even like a Nine Inch Nails track on that. I could be wrong, oh, but it's, it's a. Uh, if you were alive in the nineties <laughs> and were aware of what was going on, uh. You heard that track everywhere. Uh, let's see. Yeah, what, what, Seal, what Kiss movie? from a Rose. What um, movie was that? Batman Forever. I'm looking up. Okay. I'm yeah. staring at the Whoa. soundtrack right now. Iggy Pop was on here. Method Man. Uh, yep. Bone Thugs and Harmony and the Smashing Pumpkins. Yep. Wow. Yep. wow. The Flaming Lips. Sunny Day Real Estate was on here as well. Wow, that's a good fucking set. Oh, and then U2. Hmm. Not what, bad. U2 song. Uh, Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me. Huh. Oh, yeah. That, that was a big thing. Yeah. And then Brandy, Where Are You Now? But oh, yeah. good, good yep. fucking set, though. That's a nice one. They got a bunch that they got. They have on Spotify's list here, but it's like blacked out. Yeah. But let's see. Mazzy Star, Nick Cave. Oh, The Offspring, Smash It Up was on here? No shits. Fucking hey. No one then REM. I mean, it was it was like 1997, you know? Yeah, so that makes sense with a lot of these artists. Holy shit. Um, Gnome, do you have a soundtrack you could think of for a film? Absolutely. Uh, the Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. A very overlooked Ooh. movie, in my opinion. That was a Wes Anderson Creed. film, hey? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It, I like. The, I love the directing in that. I don't think Bill Murray's acting at all. I think that's just how he is. He's just literally just acting as himself, but if he was a a life aquatic man. That's a acting. marine biologist. But I mean, like, it, his, the personality is <laughs> just the same. He's not really putting in that much effort because it's just him, just in a different setting. Okay, so I'm seeing Life on Mars. Acting. That's a good one. No. What? Yeah, it's got a... Sue George, Sue George, a, a Portuguese singer, okay. and he sings a lot of songs in Portuguese. And they're like, uh, fuck, uh, a a few David Bowie songs. I'm looking at them right now. Starman, yeah. he does a. There's a cover here. Um, Life and on I Mars. Got, yeah. When he sings those songs, it's amazing because he sings them in Portuguese, and by God, they're mouthfuls. Mm. Yeah, not bad. That's a good set. What were you trying to say there, Captain? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> um, might be a controversial one here because I know not a lot of people like this Arnold Schwarzenegger film. I'm going to say Last Action Hero. That was a great movie. Oh, oh my god, I love that movie. Oh, that, it's my all-time favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger film. It's so good. Uh like even the like my favorite scene is like when the kid first goes like into the film and he just like realizes like where the fuck am I? Gunshot goes off and he realizes he's like in the middle of the actual like chasing like <laughs> Yeah. This is not happening. This is not real. Stick of dynamite comes in and he's like freaking out while like Arnold's like fumbling around trying to put it out. 
it just oh such a good scene but yeah you got like acdc in there alice in chains yep. like amazing like hard rock metal soundtrack you got megadeth in there too yeah uh angry oh, anthrax yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a great fucking song. Uh, what was it? Uh, Queen Schreier, I believe, in that one as well. Queen, you mean Queen Shrike? Yeah, sorry, I don't know why I botched that fucking one up, but yeah, that one, uh, they're in there as well. Like, it's an amazing fucking soundtrack, and I will still listen to it while just cruising, just so damn good. Um, yeah, I didn't know you guys liked that film too. I thought I was like the, the only one out. So, like, I haven't yeah. seen it in years, but I remember liking it a lot. Oh my cousin yeah, showed no, me that love movie. That flick. Uh, even just like when you you think of like Arnold Schwarzenegger's like catchy one liners, that it's just a lot of it is that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think my favorite one liner he does is like after like um, his daughter's <laughs> place was like ransacked by a bunch of goons and he's just about to like chase after the the getaway driver, and the cops like, "Where are you going?" He's like. I have to go catch the red eye. And it's like the guy with like the red eye, like fake eye in his hand, in his head is just fuck me. <laughs> so damn good, man. Any other... Charles dance, maybe. Oh, he did so good as a, as a villain for that one. It, yeah, it's it, awesome. It is eerie watching that now compared to when you see that as a kid where he realizes like, Oh, you could actually win in the real world as a criminal. And he's like doing the whole speech. He's just like Hannibal Lecter. Ha, I'll I'll even get King Kong. He's like, because in this world, Jack, the bad guys can win. And he's just like, that's just pure madness. I'm like, holy shit, here we go. But yeah, even that movie, I'd like to see a follow up. Yeah, what's fucking Jack Slater doing these days, man? Like, I know he's back in the film, but come on. I know he. Uh, I think he was an archer for a little bit here and there if i'm thinking of the right guy the are you talking like the the actor oh, that, that captain uh, mentioned or schwarzenegger i thought you said for some reason slater popped in my head but you said slater i thought of the guy from uh, archer oh, i don't no. know why oh no uh, in the in the movie like his name is jack slater oh i feel big dumb I yeah apologize. It, it's all good it, it's like you said it's been a bit since you've seen it yeah that, that, my cousin showed me that movie many years ago yeah and, he, and then another movie he showed me was uh, There Can Be Only One, Highlander. Oh, Highlander? I've oh, never seen sure. before. Yep. No, it's a great movie. Yeah, that's like the only reference I've heard from that film, but I've never seen it, though. You, you, what you're saying is there can only be one reference? Oh, for fuck's sakes, dude. No. <laughs> no. Is there any the Highlander, that, Go ahead. The Highlander's a great movie, though. That's all I gotta say about that. Is there any other soundtracks you guys can think of top of your head? Um, I'm trying to think from that time period. Mm, I think I actually have one saved in my playlist here on Spotify. I'm sure of it. Oh, okay. So, oh, no, it's not that same time period. But if I were to throw an yeah, you know what? Fuck it. If I were to throw a newer one in there, I'm going to say Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's a great mm. soundtrack to it. Like, he, his films have the best soundtracks in my eyes. Because I love it for Quentin, like, when he releases the, the, the actual official soundtrack on CD, he's also including, like, the radio station commercials from that era. So when you throw that yeah. CD in, like you're hearing everything from like, whether it's, you know, 94 in Pulp Fiction or it's the 1970s into the eighties for once upon a time in Hollywood, just the level of immerse, like it's incredible. Yeah. So many good songs on that. Um, yeah. If I had to throw a new one easily for once upon a time in Hollywood, but if we're going to go in the, in our era, I'll say the Matrix. Ooh, like a lot of people That's will, will think soundtrack. About, well, a lot of people think of Dragula, but there's a few other ones there. I think I'm pretty sure there's either 
Dragula was in the Matrix? Yeah, uh, when he's in the nightclub scene first meeting Trinity. Oh. Yeah, that, it, that was more of like a a club techno remix of that song, which mm. great fucking one. That same song was used in uh, Gran Turismo 1 for PS1. Good fucking jam, though. Um, let me see. Matrix... Yeah, like you have Ministry that's in there. You also have Marilyn Manson, The Prodigy, Zombie, The Deftones, uh, Monster Magnet, and then, uh, what was it? Rage Against the Machines, Wake Up. That was the yeah, song playing yeah. in the credits. And then Du Haas by Rammstein. Like, awesome. Yeah, that, that's, a hell, that's a hell of a thing. Man. Oh, du Haas finish. That's one bad uh, uh, bucket list. That's uh Triple X. They had Rammstein in the beginning. The first one. Really? Yeah, that was the band that was playing at the beginning of Triple X. It was Rammstein. Oh, Vin Diesel. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. We were doing uh I think it's uh Fire Fry. That sounds about right. I it's been forever since I've seen that film, but I do recall like yeah, Rammstein was playing live in yep. that, right? Yep. Okay, that's jogging okay. a bit of memory. Yeah, that, that that's uh, the only thing I remember from that movie, and that was the only part I really cared about because mm-hmm. Rammstein fucking rules. And I, I saw, I tried watching a third Triple X movie, but by God, it's so awful. I didn't even know they tried making a third one. I know that they had a second one with Ice Cube, and I wasn't and interested. I like that one. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think like, I haven't seen again a movie I haven't seen since I was a kid, so it probably has aged like fine milk. I will admit, like anything with Vin Diesel, like I'm just not interested anymore. Like it, like it was like of help with like the Fast and Furious films, which I did watch up to Tokyo Drift, and then after that, I just didn't care anymore. And like anything with Vin Diesel, I know he was like in. He tried doing a DC film, was it called Bloodshot or Bloods Bloodsport or something like that? And I heard it didn't... The Rock? No. Uh, was that The Rock? I thought that was Vin Diesel in that one. Let me take a look here. I swear to God. Or else that's going to be a fever dream. I'm not going to... Uh, let's see. Well, The Rock did uh, Black Adam. Right. Yeah, it was Vin Diesel. It was released during COVID, and it was called Bloodshot, and it was based off uh, the DC comics. Mm. So that did really well for them. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, during COVID. Like, I think the only film I watched that came out during COVID was Black Widow, I think Onward, from Pixar. Oh, that was cute. That was a good film. I had nothing bad to say about it. Um, yeah, that was cute. Yeah. I think just to see like a buddy comedy with like um, Chris Pratt and Tom Holland was just a perfect pairing. <laughs> <laughs> Spider Man and Star Lord. Yeah, no kidding. Fuck. Yeah. You got one more soundtrack you want to throw in there, Captain? Ooh, okay. So, man, there's so many that I'm thinking of. From like the nineties, oh, yeah. um, that's when that was like really like the thing. So I'm you can you can list another like, one if you want by all means. No, no, I I've got I've got the perfect one, and okay. I just it, people are gonna think I'm a hipster. Uh, Garden State, never even heard of it. That rings a bell. What's the plot of that again? Garden State, written directed by Zach Braff of Scrubs fame, oh. uh, is the story of a New Jersey born and bred boy who has gone out to California to make his way as an actor. And he gets called back home for his mother's funeral. Um, there he meets a quirky young girl who teaches him how to live in love. That sounds like another film with that premise. I think like Charlottetown. 
I mean, no, sure. I that, don't know. I no, don't no see it, that. It, it, it's all good. Like, it sounds kind of the same premise, except it was like, it was like the dad that passed away. And I know, I think the actors in that were both Kirsten Dunst and Orlando Bloom. And it was like 2005 mm. around there kind of thing. Okay. It, so, it, yeah, it similar time like frames. That. Yeah. It's, so. it's got, but yeah, Garden State had a spectacular soundtrack. Um, Quite a cast on there too, by golly! Mm. Yeah, oh. yeah. Zach Braff, Natalie Portman as your two leads. Um, oh, what's his name? Skarsgård. Scar. Oh, um, uh, is it Bill Skarsgård? No, no. no I just read it, it. it. I think it's their dad. No, it's not their dad. He's not even in that family, but he shares the name. Oh, uh, Peter Sarsgaard. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. Okay. Because yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Wow. Yep, Peter Sarsgaard. Uh, but he's fucking great in it. Um, yeah, fantastic movie. It was very, uh, very impactful. I think it came out in like 2004. Okay. Huh. You know who else it has in there? Who? Jim ooh, Parsons ooh. from Big Bang Theory. Natalie. Oh, Portman he as well. plays. He plays the uh, uh, fucking one night stand night. Oh, holy wow. shit! Fucking Sheldon, holy hell! I had no idea. Damn! Wow! <laughs> it's got Jeffrey. I watch Big Bang Theory. No, I only I only just know just because of the memes, but I've never sat down and watched an episode. I used to like it a lot when I was younger. I I remember oh, I've I've seen like a lot of clips from the show Young Sheldon, mm-hmm. and I will say this: the best parts of, about it uh, do not have Sheldon in it. Period. That's understandable. The, part, the parts with him, it's just unbearable and awful. But like this, the, the plots with his brother and shit, yeah, very interesting. So, so I'll. This is my thought on. Big Bang and Young Shelton. Um, they are dumb shows about smart people. Yeah. Whereas shows like Community or It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia are smart shows about dumb people. Yeah, I can see that. Damn. Yeah, I could see that too. Shit. So, you know, watch what you want to watch. If if that's your bag, it's your bag. But I'm just saying, like, I'd rather that's a dumb community. show about smart people. Yeah. But would you rather watch a smart show about dumb people? I believe I don't know about Young Sheldon, but I know that Big Bang Theory is the same writer behind uh, Two and a Half Men. So a uh, Which answer some questions. It's a Chuck dumb Lurie? show for dumb people. No, that about why they abuse the uh, laugh tracks. Oh yeah, like oh he took okay, over. So school. I'm I'm not against laugh tracks yeah. because I did grow up in the nineties. <laughs> I don't so know. Like... They can in the right context. Laugh tracks are great. I agree. Yeah. But you you can't do them now. I'll say that. No. You cannot do a laugh track now. It does not work. Uh, it had to have been in the 90s or within the first three years of the 2000s. Yeah. Now it would have to be live, if anything. Yeah. Um, it just uh, like uh, I know we've finished talking about uh, music soundtracks. But then I also thought of, you know, movies we want to see remade. I know one in particular, because I know you said, like, it might make you feel hipster saying it. I immediately uh-huh. thought of Empire Records. That Fuck shit. yeah. You couldn't fucking do that in 2024. No one's buying fucking no. CDs or shit. Yeah. It would have to be yeah. like independent independent stores like that are few and far between. Yeah, like we have a few like we have a chain here called Sunrise Records and you can still go there and buy CDs, vinyls, but it's more like you go for like figures and apparel and shit like that. But 
that was a decent soundtrack and a great film for its time. But I oh, can't yeah. I can't see that same premise in 2024 when like unless well, I mean maybe not Wait. Empire Records, but you could do high fidelity because people still that... like buying vinyls. You can still do that. Yeah. Yeah, it would definitely have to be a vinyl store. You'd have to, or a record store like that. Just do that just and just yeah, still have Jack Black's character be like the the snob nosed music critic. Dude, a great, uh, <laughs> or you can get the, the guy from the office, the office space, uh, the main guy, because oh. he's in Louder Milk, and he's he's a fucking music snob in that show. Like his neighbor, like buys a whole bunch of records. And like he gets so pissed off because she keeps playing like the same one, mm. and he goes over there, like steals like this big thing of fucking records, like a milk crate full of them. Mm. He puts it, brings it back to his apartment. He's going through and he goes, trash, trash, dog shit, hot trash. This one's respectable. Trash, dog shit, dog <laughs> shit, trash. And she's like, did you? Why'd you steal my records? Like, oh, I was just borrow them just to take a look at them, see what you had. Well, why'd you take the one that was playing on the record player? To save myself and you from a terrible death. Fuck. He like like in the in the in the series, he's like a uh, he was a former music critic that like would write reviews and shit in like magazines. Okay. And he wrote a book called like Hundred and One Love Songs You Can Kill Yourself To. Oh fuck. Yeah, so that's definitely like on the vibes of high fidelity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you on that one, Captain. <laughs> but I know, like, High Fidelity, they tried doing a TV show of it on Disney Plus during COVID. And it wasn't bad. It was like a one season kind of deal. And it was starring uh, Zoe Kravitz as, like, the main character. And Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it. I didn't hate it. I thought it was good. Um,. Yeah, so like if they could yeah, do that, I I did not watch any of that, but it looked interesting. Yeah, I'd say like if you know if you and your wife are looking for something to watch on like a Sunday evening or afternoon, like I'd say throw that on. It's good. It's it's pretty much not really a retelling of the film, but it's the same kind of premise where like shitty relationship yeah. goes back, you know, music in between. But it's still fun. I enjoyed it. But yeah, I don't like. I just it, it's funny to think about soundtracks and you know uh, a, a film that would make someone feel like a hipster and Amelia Empire Records. I I think of them like yeah, that shit couldn't be fucking made today. Like I don't know, maybe in an Apple store. Who knows? <laughs> Something. Well, the there's line. there's two shows that. I feel like both have really good soundtracks and one is Stranger Things. Yes, oh, do they ever? Like, oh, I about that. They've got a great soundtrack and and I've already forgotten what the other one was. I'm going to say Sons of Anarchy had a good soundtrack as well. They had so much That wasn't mine, but that's a good pick. Yeah. No, that's fair. Um, yeah, like good fucking soundtrack. They they did a lot of like bluesy rock covers of well known songs. Mickey but... Blinders had a great soundtrack too. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that show I still haven't watched yet. I've heard a lot of good things. My wa uh, what was it? My wife finished watching it, and she loves it very much too. They have two Royal Blood songs in there. That that was fucking punk rock as hell to hear that. Nice. Any um. What fucking band am I thinking of here? Uh, Dropkick Murphys, by any chance? They might be in there. Yeah. Be kind of, but they're also an Irish band, aren't they? Irish well, rock band. Like, I know it's like set in Europe and whatnot, but the, is it like set oh, in England. Ireland? Or, oh, England, okay. Well. Yeah. Because it takes place in, uh, God, what, what city is it? Not Manchester. Birmingham? Birmingham, yeah. Oh, hometown of Ozzy Osbourne. And Tony Iommi, I think. Something I just thought of here is, uh, what are some of our favorite movie quotes? You know, like some mm -hmm. of us can walk away from a film 
hearing that quote and having that stay with us for all of our lives or, you know, have an impact of some sort. And I'm wondering, like, at least two movie quotes you guys can give me. Um, I have one here, and I like I said on our break, um, they're not Marvel related. Shocker. So don't oh expect I love you 3000s <laughs> from me. Um, my fav- One of my favorites is actually from Goodwill Hunting. And it's from the mm-hmm. scene where Rob Williams and Matt Damon are sitting on the bench, you know, ha- having their session. And he goes into this whole speech with Matt Damon saying like, oh, you may know this, but not this. And he gets, it, it's a well thought out speech, but towards the end, it's where it really hits where he says to him, you don't know about real loss because that only occurs to you when you love something more than you love yourself. Cause Matt Damon's character, like he was, he, even though like he was in different foster homes, really r- rough upbringing, but he had like this very self-destructive mentality that if things were going too good, like he immediately pushed everybody out of his life. He didn't have a fucking care in the world at that point. And just to hear that, like, it makes you really think it's like, fuck, it's like, it, it, it really will hurt the day that you lose something that you even give way more care and love than yourself, whether it be a, you know, pet, family member, a friend, you know, like, and it still stays with that quote still stays with me to this day. So yeah, good while hunting Robin Williams speech easily. Captain, how about you? Uh, okay. So my first one, and it's weird because it's not a film that I'm, I, I'm a huge fan of. Okay. But it is a mantra that I am a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. Um, so they did a Dark Tower movie a few years back. Right. With Idris Elba as Roland the Chain. Uh, good casting. I had zero issue with that. I thought that was like, fuck yeah, Idris as Roland. That sounds dope. Um, but during the movie, he does get to recite the Gunslinger's Pledge. And hearing that in a theater was such an amazing moment for me, a tower junkie. Mm-hmm. Um, I have read that series so many times. I have tattoos from that series, several of them. Um I absolutely adore this franchise. So to hear, I do not aim with my hand. He who aims with his hand has forgotten the forget, or excuse me, has forgotten the face of his father. I aim with my eye. I do not shoot with my hand. He who shoots with his hand has forgotten the face of his father. I shoot with my mind. I do not kill with my gun. He who kills with his gun has forgotten the face of his father. I kill with my heart. Holy shit. That's making me think of like uh, Jules Winfield's uh, Ezekiel. No, Exodus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Same concept for sure. Very much so. Wow. That's holy shit. But to hear that spoken aloud in a theater by Idris Elba. Uh, even if the movie was garbage, <laughs> uh, it was super cool to to hear that mantra that uh, from a series that has meant so much to me mm. so many years. Well, that's good. Like, despite the fact, like as you said, like the film was shit. That 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 quote still like hit good, like from page to screen. Oh yeah. Yeah, Idris Elba reciting that. That's, yeah. <laughs> Fucking A. We'll see what Mike Flanagan does with it um, going forward. But that that's my number one, yeah. And good shit. Gnome, how about you, buddy? The, the speech from uh, Goon that uh, Doug the Thug gl- Glatt gets from uh, Mo- the Boss Ray. I can't think of his name. Okay. I'll have to look. I kind of forgot it already. Uh, let me look it up real quick. It's all good, buddy. Man. 
Yeah, no, now you just saying that mantra there, Captain. Like, fuck. Now, now I'm just thinking about Pulp Fiction. Like, fuck, why wasn't that my goddamn pick? Because that whole uh, Exodus... Uh, well, yeah, it was Exodus, right? Now, now Ezekiel. Uh, no, uh, Ezekiel was what Sam Jackson used. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and you will know my name is the Lord when I <laughs> lay my hands upon me. Fuck. Oh, dude, oh, I'm not saying it because I already got the fucking nickname of Big Ben, so I'm not saying that shit again. <laughs> I'm not saying any age or year or anniversary, so I'm not saying that shit. <laughs> I'm trying to catch myself lately on that. Um, yeah. Fuck. Am I... I'm trying to remember what year that was. That was 94. Four, yeah. Yeah. So You, you already know what I was going to say with that. But... Um, what was I think it was Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel lately. They were talking about that and they gave Samuel Jackson a briefcase. And when he opened it, it's like the gold <laughs> light, like from the film is like, Oh no way. And it's a cherry, like Jerry girl wig that he like throws on that makes him look <laughs> like Jules Winfield. Just like, Oh shit. Yes. Oh, nah, there's going to be, an, there's going to be an anniversary special release for that easily on DVD. Would I buy it? No. But I don't know. Maybe rent it if it's in like 4K or whatever. Right. So um, I'll I'll just give the, the a quick summary of it because it, it's kind of a long winded speech. But like, sure. So Doug is walking out in the middle of the night. You know, she's a bar with uh, the guy. He's the other goon on the other team that he's going to be going against, and everyone is excited for this matchup because they're both just absolute fucking warriors they the, their whole job on the team is just to beat the piss out of other players yeah and so he like he runs into the guy and uh he's just ba- basically saying like doug you have a gift don't piss it away like i had we're gonna battle it out tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna give everyone a show that they want and it's it's gonna be spectacular and it's gonna be a lot of blood and it's basically the whole, and then the, the, the later in the movie, when they finally fight, the, the, whole, the whole game, uh, Ross Ray is just teasing him, getting him to throw his gloves, just just getting him, to, just fucking with him the whole time, yeah. acting like he's going to fight him, like making him go to the penalty box and shit, and then they finally fight in like the second period, or the, the, in the third period, and they're fucking smashing each other. Yo, I, I, Glad- I remember that scene. Glatt breaks his fucking cankles. Yeah. Get get loses some teeth, but he he knocks out Ray in the end. A great fucking speech though, saying, We're gonna we know what we have to do and we're gonna give the people what they want. Yeah. But I'm gonna make you work for it. I even remember that part in that scene where like the ref tried to break it up and like he looks at him like, Don't you fucking dare. Like no, like he's getting up and he we're still fighting this out. Uh, I cannot remember that actor's name, but he's the guy that would go on, uh, who played uh Sabretooth in, uh, Origins. Tyler Wolverine. Maine. Yeah, him. Oh, he was a good goon in that film. But yeah, just amazing. Fucking great quote. Um, so my other one here is from Back to the Future Part 3. And I'm pretty sure some okay. would know this one. But it's at the end where Marty gets back to 1985. The mm. DeLorean is destroyed by an uh, oncoming train because he entered on train tracks when he got back. And as he's realizing, like, Doc's gone. He stayed in the West, you know, to live out his life. And I never got to say goodbye to him. Yeah. And as him and Jennifer are, after he goes back and gets Jennifer, comes back and sees the remains of the DeLorean. He knows that the train's coming back and it's Doc Brown and his family. But it's now a time machine train, which is fucking badass still to this day when you look at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as, you know, they're saying hello and their farewells, you know, Doc introduces his kids to them. Jennifer walks up to him and pulls out a fax machine note that once said you're fired on it from the future, from 2015. And she's like, this thing, this page went blank, you know, like, what does that mean? And the quote that still sticks with me is, 
It means your future hasn't been written yet. No one has. Your future is whatever you make it. So make it a good one. Both of you. And like, I, I, I got fucking goosebumps and chills from that. Cause like, it's to me, that's a very powerful quote, you know, like even to this day, yeah. like, you know, we, we got one life on this fucking rock. Let's make it a good one, you know? So yeah, that's back to the future. Part three, doc Brown, uh, your future is what you make it speech easily. One of my favorites. I, I remember, uh, like it was the, the day like the the final day that was in that the time machine or whatever, mm-hmm. like the October tenth through twenty fifteen or whatever, mm-hmm. the guy who played the doctor released a video saying like a lot of the things that we predicted were going to happen never happened, but the future is what you make it. Oh, fair. I mean, like even from Back to the Future two, they they called out some they they did like you know call out some shit for the future in that one. Like, it, they really got, um, what was, they almost got pretty close by the Cubs winning the World Series in 2015. They got really close, because yeah. that, that World Series, yeah, they were in the running, and then they got out. Yeah, they, but, they won the next year, though. Oh, they did, too, yeah. Um, hover, Extremely close. Hoverboards, sadly, not was not as what we hoped. <laughs> no, we got, not quite. We got, we got the the douchebag hoverboards that oh. a lot of douchebags ride around or rode around on. They they've uh, they were really popular for like two years and then. Oh, I still sell a bunch of them. Oh, really? These people still buy those oh, yeah. things. Uh, oh yeah. I, th- I should go to your Best Buy and act like I'm going to buy one and then buy something completely different. <laughs> Just get them all ready on the sales pitch. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I, like I think my two of my cousins that uh well one of them is still in high school right now but when they they both got one like for christmas and yeah riding up and down the hallways during christmas dinner with family holy fuck yeah those things were annoying as shit there was a kid i went to a community university with who uh who got one and he 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 started up second semester and he was his had like speakers in it and he was just riding around blasting music he they had those as well and yeah, like those were really fucking annoying. My God. Yeah. Ah, I'm glad those kind of went out of style though. You don't really see those out in public anymore. Yeah. Oh. Although watching all the videos of like older people getting on, I'm like, I could be hip too. And then absolutely <laughs> eating Eat a buffet shit. of shit. <laughs> yeah. That's very it was, it was spectacular. Like, <laughs> yeah. Let's get grandma on that. Don't put grandma on that. She's you shouldn't be hip. on that. <laughs> She said, do more than break a hip. You're going to send her back to fucking hell where she belongs. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Captain, what's your next quote? So my next quote comes from uh, Star Trek First Contact. Okay. So this was uh, the second TNG movie. Okay. Uh, first one was Generations, which kind of crossed them over from the TOS era to TNG era in terms of movies, but it was at the end of the TNG television show. Like next generation was over Mm -hmm. uh, before these movies started. Uh, But first contact is them versus the Borg, Uh, which the Borg is always and will always be presented as the greatest threat to Picard uh, in particular. Okay. Because he was assimilated. He did become Borg. Fuck. He became Locutus of Borg and led the attack of Wolf 359, which resulted in Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of deaths of Starfleet personnel. Oh, shit. Okay, that's pretty fucking grim. Good God. So he gets de assimilated, regains control of his ship, uh, and now several years later, the Borg are attacking again with the idea of time traveling and preventing the Federation from ever being created. Mm hmm. So that Picard and his ilk will have no threat for them. 
And Picard says to this, I will not sacrifice the Enterprise. We made too many compromises already, too many retreats. They invade our space, and we fall back. They assimilate the entire worlds, and we fall back. Not again. They pay for what they have done here. This far, no further. Holy shit. And I just, I just remember that all the way back from when I watched it in theaters. Being like, fuck yeah, Picard. Like, let's goddamn go. Like, way to just plant the flag. Holy shit. Like, they go this far, no further. And it's Jean-Luc Picard. How are you going to say no? Oh, just trying to picture that in his voice, too. Damn. Did you, like, sorry, just just mentioning Picard and whatnot. Did you see him in the Paramount Super Bowl ad? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's throwing uh, Hey Arnold while Creed's hire is playing in the background. Oh, an absolute fucking banger. <laughs> just to hear Drew Barrymore be like, oh, and Creed's here, too. <laughs> like fuck <laughs> but no that was a good one though holy shit it's it just kind of just like that last stand moment where it's like nope no more fuck that shit not yeah. happening anymore love it um what's your last one there gnomes um so you ever heard of a movie called uh fuck what what is it called slap shot oh yeah like, yeah oh, yeah no. uh I think it kind of like really sets the pace of the movie when he's like, when he he meets the 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 Hanson brothers for the first time, <laughs> and he goes in their room, and he's they're arguing over some dumb shit, and he they're like playing with cars, leaves, just like storms out, and he's like, they brought their fucking toys, <laughs> and then it really, uh, you're, you're, he's like pissed off because he's like, these guys are supposed to be the hottest thing right now, they're supposed to be absolute fucking animals on the ice. Oh, and they are. Holy and they're 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 playing with slot cars and have like a a robot toy with them. Like, what the fuck is going on? And then they just beat the ever living piss out of everything. Yeah, they're just absolute savages. Seeing and like, all oh, go ahead. all they can do is fight. I think like even when it shows like the montage of them just fucking up the other team on the ice. After like, I think it's Paul Newman that plays the head of that team he's like all right guys show me what you got this is like give each other signs of the cross they all go out there and i think one of the brothers walks by like goes skating by the opposing team puts his sticks out and like cranks everyone over the head with his hockey stick at the same time it's like a three stooges moment <laughs> oh yeah fuck i gotta watch that again such a good film slapshot fucking rules yeah oh my god like like I don't know what a lot of our pick seems to be older films, but I don't even think there's any new films that come to mind for me that have any quotes that could like imp, that that could hold on. What do you think about? But, I I don't know if that's just me. Well, there's like motivational moments in movies. That's true. That, that's not like not actual quotes. There's uh, uh there's like uh, that one movie about like that high school team. It's like a private school, and they've just absolute been dog shit for a long time under this coach. And he's like, he's on his last season, and if he doesn't do anything good, he's fired. And uh, there's a scene where he's like, like, this one kid is like, I can't do it. Like, I, I'm like, like they're talk, like shit talking him, and he's like, All right, well then, get the smallest guy on your back, and then walk, or then crawl forty yards with him on your back, or crawl twenty yards, and. uh he, he's like you have to like you you have to look straight down, just crawl, and he he's crawling. He's like I can't do it. He goes, you're gonna keep fucking going. You're gonna go all the way. And he crawls, and like he's ready to give up. Yeah. And he's like, all right, you can stop now. And he crawled the whole hundred yards across like the football field. Holy shit! And it's like you just keep your head down and just chip away. You'll you'll accomplish it, and you will not even realize. Oh, a very motivation motivating moment. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But with that being said, thank you all for tuning in to BPGN Podcast. I am the Big Greg Gamer, alongside with me. Captain Kronitha. <laughs> I'm going to get used to that. 
And alongside with him, a Papa Gnomes. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, Excelsior. <laughs>